The next time you are just about to create a new mock, make sure you stop and think about this. From this small snippet, we can see that our handler has multiple dependencies, and I want to focus on two of them. One is the iRequest validator, and the other one is the iRemanda planner. And why focusing on those two? Because they are all inside of this purple box for a reason, they are all internal dependencies. And this is the type of dependency that you should not create mocks for, or any other type of test double. But why? Because internal details are implementation details. And we should be able to change implementation details without touching tests. So how do you know next time that you are about to create a mock if that one should be a dependency that you will mock or not? For that, we need to take a step back. We know that good tests are deterministic. You can execute them several times and the result will always be the same. That also means that they are stable. And since good tests should be deterministic, we came up with the idea of test doubles. So if you are thinking about mocks, mocks are just one of the types of test doubles. You also have other types such as spies, stubs or dummies as an example. So if we are creating a new test and that test needs to be stable, deterministic, but we have one dependency that is not stable, that sometimes takes a lot of time to reply. On those moments, we bring a test double in place. And how do I know if that dependency is stable or not, is deterministic or not? Which type of things you need to think about when you are evaluating a dependency to see if it's worthy of having a mock test stable or not. You need to check if they are stable or not, if they are pure or impure. And pure when we apply the meaning from functional programming that a function can be pure or not. So if you can provide the input and expect an output without the impact of others. You can also check if the dependency is private or is shared, like a third party API. Or for example, if it's mutable or immutable. So you can look at shared dependencies and classify them in two groups. Those that are pure, those that are stable, those that you control and they will not change, they make your test deterministic. And you also have those that impose a risk. Those are the ones that we need to push to the edge. A few examples of those might be your database, might be your SMTP server. It might even be the access to your system clock. So if you think about it, it's all those type of things that need to go across the network, that need I.O., depend on your machine. Those things, you will push them to the edge. Now that you push them to the edge, you have found the core of your application, the functional core. This is something that you might recognize from ports and adapters. And this is the answer to understand if you should create a new mock or not for that dependency that you were just about doing it in the beginning of the video. If that dependency is outside of this core, it means that it's something that is not that pure, that is not stable, that will make your tests to not be deterministic and we can't accept that. So if that dependency that we have seen in the beginning is not one of those that we push to the edge, like a database or an SMTP server or something like that, if it's something that is stable and lives inside of our core, we can use the real dependency. But how can we do that? This is that test that we have seen in the beginning of the video. We have started this video by taking a look into this test. And now I want to refactor it with you so we avoid those mocks for those internal dependencies. And by the way, as always, you can grab the source code as a patron. So let's take a look into the test. Here you can quickly see that I'm using a library that is and substitutes and and substitute uses this notation to create a new mock. So and substitute is a mocking framework. And what I'm doing here is that I'm saying, okay, I need three mocks in order to create this to do handler and the mocks are these ones a substitute for the i reminder planner a substitute for the i request validator and a substitute for the i to do the repository so what i need to do now is to check each one of those based on that idea that i shared with you before let's put that in practice it all starts with a simple question does this dependency can make my tests unpredictable or undeterministic if I use the real implementation of this reminder planner, do I make my tests undeterministic? And the answer is no. Why? If we check the reminder planner class, we can see that it has some logic and there's only one risky thing that is this time provider. This time provider gives me access to the get local now. So it means that 
this state will always be changing. So it's not that dependency itself, the reminder planner, that is a risk for the test being deterministic or not. In fact, is another dependency this other class depends on. And if we check the validator as well, the request validator, we can see that it's exactly the same problem. So the time provider is one of the dependencies for the source code there. All the rest is not a risk. So we can get back into our test and refactor it in the following way. Instead of using the I reminder planner, I will now inject the real reminder planner. But this reminder planner needs a time provider. And the time provider, in fact, is unstable. So what I will do is that I will create a new fake time provider. And you can get this fake time provider through a NuGet package that is this one right here, the Microsoft extensions.timeprovider.testing. So now that I have my time provider, I provide it to the reminder planner. It means that I can use the real dependency of the reminder planner. It also means that on my validator, since I checked it before, I can also answer that this dependency, it's internal. It's not something that puts the deterministic part of my test at risk. So instead of using a substitute for that or a mock, what I will do is that I will create a new request validator and it also needs exactly the same time provider. And it also means that now I don't need this line anymore. And this line right here was a problem on my tests. Why? By the simple fact of having this line right here, any refactoring to this validator class will have an impact on my tests on tests that are not even related to the request validation. And this is one of the things that affects refactorings. And since this class is an internal implementation detail, there's no need for having something like this to need to have a programmatic definition of how they should behave. So now we can simply throw this away. And that means that I don't need the validator here anymore. And I can provide it right here. If we run our test to see if everything is still green, we can see that we succeed. And now we can keep evolving. So is this substitute for, for the I to do's repository something that I can replace with the real dependency without affecting how deterministic my tests are? And the answer is no, because this to do's repository is in fact a database that is not only something that is shared by multiple tests, but it's something that affects the speed, the reliability, and how stable my tests are. And I don't want that. So my to-do repository needs to be pushed to the edge. So it's outside of my core. And if it's outside of my core, means that I need a mock for it. Or can I use other thing instead of a mock? I think so. I'm not a huge fan of mocking frameworks, so I will show you another way to achieve exactly the same thing. So instead of using this substitute for the i to do's repository, I will use also a fake. This fake time provider is something provided by Microsoft on a NuGet package, but I will apply the same pattern, the fake. So a fake is a test double. And how do you implement fakes? I will simply go to my test project and I will create a fake to do repository. This fake to do repository needs to implement the interface that we want to replace. So if our test needs the I to do's repository, that's the one that we need to implement. And now this fake will work. It will work as an in-memory database. So I just need to have something like a dictionary that then I can access to check if the data is there. And to work that way, I have many possible options to do it. I can, as an example, create a private field with a dictionary and all of that, but I will do it in another way. I will basically make this fake to do repository an instance of concurrent dictionary, and I will add a quid because it's the ID of my to do, so it will work as the key of this dictionary, and then I will add the to do there. So this means that now this fake to do repository will act as a database, as an in memory database. So when I'm creating, I simply need to do add or update. I provide the ID. I also need to provide what I should do to add the new to do into the dictionary. So I will say, please add the to do and what I should do in case I have a collision and I want to replace a given value. By doing so, I can now return a complete task because I have the complete implementation of the create async. So if we get back into our test, this means that instead of using and substitute for that, I can say that the repository is a new 
fake to do repository. By doing so, this dot received one will not work anymore because this is part of end substitute, so I can remove it. And instead of checking it this way, what I can simply do is that I will go to repository and I can try to get from there the one that I asked to add. So I can add this to a variable that I will name was added to database. So now I can throw away this final line and we can assert if it was added to the database or not. If we run this test again, it still succeeds. And to prove you that, let's remove the end substitute package from my tests, rerun them, and they are still green. So we avoided the use of a mocking framework for the sake of this type of tests, simply because we took this conscious decision of understanding which dependencies we should have a test double and which dependencies don't need them. Now, I will take this code a step further. Since now we know that dependencies like these ones are internal, the request validator and the reminder planner, it means that now we can remove them from this constructor, we can change accessibility levels, we can throw away those interfaces that we defined before, but all of that is a topic for another video. So now let's recap what you should do. As you have seen during this video, we have moved all of those internal dependencies into internal implementation details. And by doing so, we achieve one important result, that is reducing the number of existing dependencies to a minimum. If you organize your code that way, where everything that is inside of that card, that box that we have seen before, is your implementation details, and you push the real dependencies to the edge, you will see that your test code becomes more stable. It doesn't break as easy. So, if your application, if the code living inside of that box, that functional core, needs to access a database, needs to go through a messaging system, needs to send an email, needs to load information from the environment, needs to access the file system, anything like that, you know that you need to push those dependencies to the edge. And those can be replaced with a test double, either a mocking framework or you can apply a technique like the one that I showed you. And in addition to those that go across the network through I.O., access to the environment, something like that, you have those that make your tests unpredictable, like accessing the clock, like a time provider, or another example that we didn't mention during the video is, for example, random number generators. So any dependency like those two or the other ones that we mentioned, you need to model in your system a concrete dependency, a dependency that can be replaced for testing. All the rest, treat them as implementation details. And if you like this video and you are curious about this technique of using test doubles instead of a mocking framework, I think you will like this video right here, where I show you how to replace a mocking framework with the use of test doubles, being dummies, spies, stubs, fakes, and even implementing your own mocks.